Welcome everybody to the Laser Sports Academy podcast. Today we are joined by co-founder Ryan Holmes. How are you, Holmesy? Joel, very good. Very good, very good. Thank you for coming along. And Mr. Danny Popeyes from New Zealand, a legendary player from the Cobras, who everybody knows the Cobras, but if you haven't heard of the Cobras because you've been under a rock, second place in Worlds in 2019. Uh, Danny himself is finaled in every event at Zeltac, except for Law, I've heard. Uh, lots and lots of uh, podium finishes for that team. Uh, Danny's also now the president of the Laser Sports New Zealand Association and co-founder of our very exciting new player tracking system. So, Danny, welcome along. Thanks for coming along. Hey, yeah, thanks. It's good to be on. Excellent. Uh, so, today is just a, like all about New Zealand today. Uh, there's a huge amount happening for you guys next year in 2024. Um, and yeah, we're here today just to fully unpack all of it. So yeah, we're going to get into the tournaments you've got coming up. We're going to talk about what you have going on at a local level, uh, what sites are actually engaged in the community, what systems they're running, what, what the arenas are like, how you guys are picking your teams for Weld, and there is some exciting news that you're going to announce about a little new event that might be coming up, uh, as well as an update on the player tracking system. So we've got plenty to get into today. So I thought I'd hand over to you to start, Danny, just for all of us um, from around the planet that don't know what you guys have have going on there. Um, could you give us a bit of background on just what you've what sites are, are playing competitions, yeah, yeah. leagues, uh, what systems they're running, what the arenas are like, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so um, New Zealand's had a uh, sort of long history now of, of different sites coming in and coming out. So for us Auckland guys, none of the original sites that we started at exist anymore. So if you played in um, uh, Mount Wellington uh, back in the day, that's gone. Uh, North Shore, we used to call ourselves the North Shore Cobras, that's gone. Um, and we've even had some that have sort of popped up and disappeared. In, in the meantime so in Auckland it's pretty much just Silverdale now um, which is it's in Auckland but it's a bit of a drive for everyone right it's like um, like for me it's a 30 minute drive some people it's further um, but it's an it's an excellent site the side op is the guy who who ran offshore back in the day so he's like our side op um, we've also had a lot of help from Fred building the maze and stuff so um, I don't think he did the original build but he's come in and improved it a lot so um, big thanks to him for that um so we're yeah, pretty much auckland is just silverdale now but yeah it's a fantastic location um awesome arena and like it's just a cool site to be at so um we've been i think since covid uh sort of struggling to get numbers up like we hadn't played team games really at all since um since covid until zaltac but with a bit of help we've got um We've got, well, Rachel's sort of running it, so um, she's one of the members on the LSNZ committee, uh, Maldi's partner. She was at um, Zeltec. She sort of, she's, she's running the night at the moment, and um, with help from Annie, who's our other Auckland rep, um, Arcane. And she sort of seems to have managed to bring everyone from her work along and more. <laughs> so nice. we're hitting like 25 people a night now, so we're actually Ooh. getting to the stage where not only can we make teams, but we're having to do rotations and stuff, which is perfect, right? So, is that for your trainings or for league? That's for our, I don't know, our Wednesday night. We call it league night, but it's it's like anyone can go to that. Um, and we've just started um, like a Friday night, which is more like it's aimed at being higher tier. Um, we haven't hit 15 yet, but we will um, pretty soon, I think. So we'll, we'll have those two nights. So it's been ages since we've been able to support two nights in Auckland. Mm -hmm. So it's all in the up and up for us. At home, we've got a lot, like it's heavily skewed towards new players at the moment. Like we've never had such a heavy new player skew, I don't think, for, for years anyway. But it's it's awesome. Like it's, yeah, it's like a breath of fresh air at the, at the Auckland scene, I think. When you've been um, through the, um, when you've been through the cycle of seeing what happens when you don't have the new players in your scene, how like, oh, nice yeah, is yeah. it? We used to have this really good dynamic where North Shore was really new player friendly. And then if you wanted like to go hardcore, you'd go to Mount Wellington and you'd go and it would be like a step up. So everyone could sort of get their, get their training wheels on at North Shore and then go to 
Matt Wellington for like the next level. Um, so hopefully we can achieve the same sort of thing with the, you know, the Wednesday Friday split. That's all we know. I'm um, also fingers crossed we get more sites in Auckland, right? Like it's so, it's sort of always on the horizon, but you never know until something happens, right? Yeah. And and uh, I mean most people know Silverdale's the location for Worlds, so I mean Correct. I'm sure everybody's curious as hell to know how the arena plays. Is there any comparable arenas in Australia or globally? Um, so our bases have three doors mm. and they're Heresy. pretty much impossible <laughs> to hold inside. Like there are spots inside. Like, so my idea of a perfect base is there's no, there's no like two man lock. So the, I really like the, the Hobart bases, for example, for the most part. Um, so you get like a, a position, like I like to have a position under, and even like you can have a position under that's perfect cover on one door, but it should be weak to the other door, right? Mm. Um, so there's plenty of spots inside the base, but they're all weak to something, right? So you have to get and take the base, get out. You would never put more than one. And so, well, maybe, you know, you never know what people figure out, right? Like, mm. But when we play, we wouldn't ever put more than one in, and a lot of the times you wouldn't put even one in. We do have... um. We do have some changes planned for the arena, so maybe that'll change. Um, a like the biggest like issue I'd say at the moment is it's really unclear where to put the refs. Um, like you kind of need two refs per base, and that's not ideal, right? Um, so we might rework that a little bit, but they're kind of brutal bases. Like it's pretty easy to get denied, let's say. Yeah, right. And is it like a small arena, large arena? Like when you're pushing out it's, the points, so if you look at the map, up, it doesn't yeah. look that big. Yeah. But that's do wanna, because do you want to pull it's... up the maze map, or do you want me to? Yeah, go for it. Um, you'll be able to find it on our website. Um, it's just pretty easy to find. It's under resources, maze maps, New Zealand, something like that. Um, it doesn't look that big on the maze map, but it's because everything is like two meters wide. So the actual arena is like it's probably as big as, for example, it's bigger than Adelaide. But it looks probably smaller than Adelaide on the maze map. Mm. Um, it's not like the massive arena. It's definitely bigger than Adelaide right now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, I mean, I, yeah. So when I say Adelaide, I mean when I played there in 17, 18, whatever yeah, it was, 17. 17. Yeah. So all of this stuff. So like, if you look at, for example, from red base to the wall, even where the walls come out, like stick out, it's still like two meters. Like those corridors are still like two meters wide. Right. Um, it looks like it might play small though, because it's there's not. It does play, play a little small. Like you can, yeah. like there's shots from like sort of one door to the other door. Yeah. Um, so there's always like if you're if you're at red or blue, there's two doors that that are kind of tucked away, right? You go back to those doors, you can fight. The other base isn't really interacting with you, right? But if you're at the other side, the side close to green, you definitely get cross shots and stuff. And then switching bases is really fast, but it's quite exhausting. Like. Like running from door to door, they're a lot further away than they look. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, just, just the distances are quite, are quite big. We are going to change it. Um, we probably want it to, like you said, feel a little bit bigger. Um, and gr like the other blue and red are really good bases, but green, uh, you can see that that corridor is a bit narrow around it. It's a yeah. bit, like it's when awesome. I say narrow, I kind of mean it's a normal width corridor instead of like a double yeah. width. Yeah. corridor like it would still be fine by zeltec standards but um we like to have lots of space we don't want like you know um and so, what yeah, about we're... what about the denial factor like from if some you know you're getting the basic green and a person running in from red base to deny you is that a thing that can happen um they're further away like if you're in your base or like in the defensive area around your base you can't run and deny someone maybe if they're standing in the open but like if they're tucked up in the pocket you can't like the denial range isn't as far as it looks yeah. um just because like the distances are longer like if you're you see how blue and well all three bases have that little l outside the bases yeah so if you're in there and someone was taking from like kind of the obvious take spot the pocket um so just actually right through the wall from you it's very unlikely to get the deny running either either way around just because really? the distance is too far. That's wild. 
Like it looks, it looks yeah, like when you just look at it like that, it looks like you take a few steps and you're in. <laughs> yeah. Well, like if they're in the corner properly, like if you can hit yeah. them from the door, obviously they're screwed, right? Yeah. But if they're tucked in that corner, you have to run all the way around to them. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's probably like four meters from the L to the door and then, you know, another four meters back to them, right? It's like a long way and you've got to do a, yeah, it's so it's not, it's nowhere near as tight as it looks. And even though it's really hard to hold the internal spots, you still find they get used. It's not like a, a Bendigo situation where they just, you don't play the inside. You use them well. a little more than Bendigo. Um, sorry, one sick, my cat's scratching at the door. <laughs> just give me a second. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> Got to feed your cat, Danny. Uh, he just doesn't like the closed doors, you know. <laughs> That's the problem. He probably doesn't want to be in or out, but... There I mean, is. watching the um, watching the invites stream, it looked like a lot of teams were playing like a last line in the yeah. Uh, so the pocket, pocket is pretty popular. Um, <clears throat> right now, the problem with the pocket is you can watch you can watch one of the doors perfect, hundred percent, no problem, right? Yeah. You can watch another one of the doors perfect, except your back's exposed, right? So you can only do it when you're clear. And then the third door, the one we call middle door. If your calls are good and the other doors are clear and et cetera, et cetera, you might be okay from middle door as well, right? So you can use that position. Um, a lot of people have been playing, like, as, as we get to higher skills, people are playing on the other walls internally and sort of moving back and forward between yeah. the... Is this the middle Between door? the little hooks. That one. So all those little internal hooks we put in, that was sort of the changes we made for invites. Right. Um, so you can run sort of back and forward between those and, and cover. It's quite a dynamic way to play. Looks like hard bloody work, mate. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it is, especially if the distance is like you're definitely <clears throat> running a lot further. So like, like all the time, and you often get denied. You'll think, I'm sure I had time, but you forget that you spent like four seconds running before yeah. you yeah. shot the base. Sounds like it suits you, Holmes. You're going to be able to get your, you're going to be able to get me a cat back happening. A me a cat. He's <laughs> making a comeback. <laughs> my a twin, comeback. my identical twin that's retired. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, re it's really good, like, there's definitely some improvements we can make, but, like, it's a very, for the speed it plays at, it's very safe, right? Like, you can always see what's in front of you. You can pass it, even if someone's coming out of the base, like, you could have three abreast in the base doors, right? Like, it's always, like, it's very rare you run in the base and someone's in your way, because you can just nip around them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't it doesn't look um, like you're going to be like dangerously lung, like lunging at doors is not going to be as dangerous as like yeah well that's the other thing <laughs> right you have to like you have to be smart to get people out rather than just yeah. try and go fast yeah do you guys play more one shot per second stuns or two shots per second yeah so in New Zealand we play two shots per second when we're leading up to Australasia and then typically we switch back to one shot when we're coming up because invites is played on well invites is played on a mixture but the main event is played on one shot yeah mm. so oh. t tell us a bit about um so there's also you got the dunedin scene happening as well yeah are they, are they so kind dunedin, of the two pillars at the moment you yeah yeah so dunedin's the other one so um i think i've i think i've gone through this before but we basically discovered that dunedin had a laser tag scene in 2016 aaron and i just found it like it was a university club basically and we're like, holy crap. And we flew down, played them, and we're like, we have to have a tournament here. And that's how the first invitationals kicked off. Um, so, yeah, since then, they've, they've obviously come a long way, right? Like, I moved down there for a couple of years at one point, which I think helped out a bit. Mm. Um, but they're, you know, they're a self-sufficient scene now. Their league nights are pretty good. Um, they're actually training. Like, you saw their team that they brought over from... Um, yeah, you saw the team they brought over for Australia, um, pretty well for a for a first year, I think. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and yeah, <clears throat> um, they're just they're, they're kind of going from strength to strength. They spanked us last time, so not the invites it's just been, but the one before. They they won every event, um, including like solos and stuff, right? So um, they beat us, even though we've played this arena. Like it's not like it's like it's a home arena, but it's not. You know, like we've all played it a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. They so they beat us at solos, doubles, triples, everything, right? Mm -hmm. There was like out of like the thirty nine trophies or whatever, if you count, you know, five fifteen for teams and I think like they got like thirty one of them or something. That's crazy. Like, and it's on H two over there, right? Yeah, that so was... it was it was Helios two. Um so that was an advantage that they don't normally have, right? We hadn't played mm -hmm. 
but even so right like in our grading system they've got like a couple of b's and then and they're their highest players right um like they don't even have an a player in dunedin based on our system and they like you know completely cleaned up so uh, credit to them i i wouldn't really i'd you know i didn't really come out of it being like oh h2 h2 um <laughs> there's actually a lot of maze changes planned for dunedin as well um this map is the arena that we played last time mm. um it's kind of changed every year that we've played um the guy the owner grant has a ton of changes planned i actually i wonder if i can share them with you guys i've got um i better not because i don't know if they're <laughs> if they're all public right, or right, not right, right, right. um it's but, online but so we yeah we went through and designed um a bunch of changes months months ago um and i think he's doing nine percent of what we recommended cool. so yeah. uh we've got a triples tournament in about a month there or probably less than a month there and he's he's told us they'll be done by then right so i'm excited to see how that shakes out is this um arena as small as it seems to be or is it another like elusive one where it's actually well like weirdly this so this arena has shrunk a couple of times mm. but this arena originally was massive to be honest like when we first went there we we're like holy crap this is huge it's like in this old factory um but i wouldn't say all the gaps are wider than they look so i'm not really sure what gives it the impression of being small or well, maybe it feels bigger than it is when you're in there I'm not maybe. sure They've it's um space well. it's not a small arena but it's i wouldn't yeah. call it a giant arena but i when i first went there i would have called it a giant arena and they haven't taken that much away so and do you guys yeah. use this like this little walkway that's on the right the hand upstairs side area yeah does it get used in comp um so that's changed over the years we used to just allow it in teams because we like you can do like the there's not really any shots downstairs there are but not enough to send someone up there right um but it was like if you wanted to waste like a minute going up there and sneaking around sometimes you could get behind a push defense and get a base mm -hmm. so we like left it there for like the the hope that it would happen i think um i think this was maybe when i wasn't on the committee um we took it out because and the reasoning for taking it out was we can't have refs up there what if someone hurts themselves up there like no one's ever going to find them right um we've always banned it for side events because otherwise the holes like if you have upstairs allowed in solos solos will be played upstairs only right so yeah. we've always had it banned for stuff like that um yeah i i personally i like playing with it uh allowed but i think we normally if you look real close you can actually see some yellow lines halfway up each ramp mm, yeah. um up, up before the corner and that's where you normally say you can't go past that yeah it's like what they did in bendigo for 2022 for the upstairs. yeah so you can still use it as a bit of a pocket but you can't really yeah go up there yeah they're not bad spots for elam yeah make sure the bottoms of the ramps and the internals of the bases get played here more than silverdale um it's again like yes but more like as a temporary measure um green diff in this in this iteration green you could put two inside it wasn't mm. completely bonkers but you could do it red you don't really plan side you probably wouldn't plan side or you'd plan side only only in certain configurations yeah if it was top tier but remember we're playing with the whole range right every team will have like an e yeah. player and a player on it so you might put them inside anyway because <clears throat> it's easy even if it's not like optimal you know and then blue this year you see that one person zone in blue mm. that was a very high skill position um to the point where like if the guy didn't want to come out he wasn't coming out and you just had to deal with you just had to deal with him being there while you took the base kind of thing um it looks like the, the the box in darwin that one was pretty yeah crazy. so with one <laughs> shot per second and with h2 phases they're not impossible to get out yeah but they also don't have full control over the base so you could just take the base while they're in there right yeah um in new zealand we don't have those rules about taking the base while you're outside the base etc so we call it sneak taking and it's always been uh an important part of our meta it's always just mm. been fully allowed you're not allowed to like bounce it off a roof or through a crack in the wall or whatever but if you can see the base it's fair game 
I think it makes like, sense when when a when bases play like this. Yeah, like it, it, it's so, a, yeah, it's a sensical rule to have. Yeah, so if you look at blue base, for example, um, the door at the bottom of the page, I don't know what we call that back door, I think, but a very common take is just to stand on that pink area and take the base. Mm. Right. Um, so we'd call that sneak back, sneak back, sneak back, right? Mm. Um, and you can do that while the guy's in the pocket, fine. I think the main... Because I'm all for... I like sneak takes as well. And it's like, if you... I think like if you don't want people to be able to shoot the base from outside, then don't design the base so it can be. But the bit, the main very convincing argument I've heard for not allowing the sneak takes, as you put it, is um, especially in Australia, a lot of the time, once you hear a shot on the base, right, a lot of the traffic is flowing inward toward the base, right? Because the, the person's going to be yeah. in there. And there's an argument that if they're able to shoot it from the outside... When people don't know where they're taking from, you'll have really... And obviously, it's, that's the, the fastest, most high-paced part of the game is when shots are on. Then you've got high-paced traffic coming in and out of the base to get this person. And um, that was the that was a pretty... That hasn't been our dog. experience. Like, I would right. even say when it's crowded. Sometimes, you know, when there's so many people to base, that even when the base, there's a chance, you can't take the chance because you've got to navigate your way around yeah. all the people. <laughs> and by the time you've done that, the chance is gone like mm. having extra take spots really helps with that as well right that's true yeah and i think um, also when when like it's common that you're going to take it from like that pink area outside blue people just like that and, and people's people, speed and everything adjust accordingly yeah and people know like the thing is you know how you get a bit of a sense about what the next couple of plays are going to be yeah. people will call that they're setting up the sneak right because you can't just do it like you're exposed to everything when you do it right yeah um so i yeah i wouldn't say it improves safety but it it definitely doesn't hurt it um yeah. in our experience no that's fine cool um all right so let's move on guys uh we are going to talk a little bit about worlds but before we do that danny um can you give us a bit of a lay of the land in terms of how you guys run things in new zealand like how your associations set up um who yeah. Uh, yeah who makes decisions on things um yeah that kind yeah of stuff. yeah so we probably got started earlier than most states oh. i don't want to say all states and i also don't know like the australian history is so long that i'm sure there's been organizations that have finished like you know started and then ended up wrapping up before we got started yeah. but we're pretty early <clears throat> so we started really with that first tournament in 2016 um the big driver was aaron v dark um like i've always been involved but he was the he was the one that wanted it so after we played in brisbane and we saw the brisbane scene and we're like there's no way we can compete with queensland without a similar scene um like we need people to train against right so we started it up back then we weren't calling it ls and z to begin with but we started running a league night um so we always had like members night and stuff but we started an actual like a league we ran that for basically until north shore closed um and then we started doing the invites and at some point we started calling ourselves lsnz and uh especially around the worlds um we started thinking like new zealand needs an organization so originally we were more like just me and aaron running events right mm. um but eventually we wanted it well we wanted it to outlast us as well um but so we incorporated i want to say 2019 we incorporated legally and nice. got a committee um so we've had a committee for a while um and it hasn't always been me or aaron running it there's been a period where neither of us won it and it survived and flourished under under others so um moldy was the president for i think two years and um and they had, you know they had a completely different committee as well so that side's really good like it's it'll definitely endure i think the society so we've got like we're pretty i like to think we're pretty advanced like we've had our own bank account for probably four or five years um like if you've seen our website everything's done through the website so event signups is on the website you pay on the website all that stuff what's the url um, for people who want to check it out yeah yeah so um 
LSNZ.com, is it? No, it's la- it's Laser, Laser Sports NZ. Oh, Laser Sports NZ. Yeah, I wish we had LSNZ, but <laughs> <laughs> um, good good enough. Um, it's a really good tool for us just to be able to, um, like I go there all the time for resources. Like we have as many maze maps on there as we can have, and we've got like you can find our founding documents and our rules and stuff on there. But I mean, essentially, it's a five person committee. Um, so we have two Dunedin, two Auckland, and one president who can be from anywhere. There's provisions in there for if we get new zones and how that works and all that sort of stuff. But that's how it is right now. So it's, yeah, two Auckland, two Dunedin, plus one. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we 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 cycle that every year, basically, um, sometime after anyway, it's normally. It's an awesome website. Go check it out, everybody, if you haven't had a chance to. They've got like heaps of information about worlds. They've got all their old results from all their old tournaments, um, maze maps, the whole bit. So, yeah, probably the best association website that I think I've seen. I don't think I've mm. seen anything better than what you guys are doing. So, yeah, man, hats off for getting all that sorted. And you must have been the early, like one of the earliest to have a bank account and stuff. Of of Yeah, I think we're probably the I th- Like I said, I think we're the first to associate I th- probably first ever bank account but i don't know like australia's super old scene i imagine there's some state who's probably done that all before associated and and has disappeared right since since then mm. and then Tassie um, were pretty early too tassie you've been doing it for some time as well yeah right? yeah so i don't i don't want to claim first place or anything for that yeah, but sure. we, we are pretty we are yeah. pretty like we've we've always like that's something we've always tried to be doing is pushing the envelope with our society right yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm pretty sure Adelaide's actually had a. What do we call it? We called it ZPI. I don't know what the acronym stands for. Yeah, and that I that sounds because I've never heard of that, so I imagine that could be. Yeah, yeah. So old. we had ZPI, and that was that was always players like Gizmo, and stuff. I mean, when I started, I'm pretty yeah. sure it had like Gizmo, Pal, uh, Moo, and maybe some other players. But um, mm. yeah, we've had that since <clears throat> for as long as I've been playing. And that was um yeah, we they would they had a bank account and that's actually the one that Salsa's using now. We've just kinda <laughs> we've hijacked it. Um because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think ZPI kinda half disappeared and then when the state based committee stuff happened, it was like, Oh, we already have some kind of thing back, yeah. going on. So um yeah, and they I think they just used that for things like you know, when we ordered our uh, uh, Nat shirts and stuff, we would do it all through ZPI and it would just be like one big order. Um, they did stuff like that. Occasionally they did things like um, organize, like a, I think in Bendigo, they organize accommodation and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so we've definitely had, a, I don't know how long it existed before that. Um, mm. Maybe Moo likes to watch these podcasts, maybe watch this and he'll he'll let us know in the, in the comments or something. But um, yeah. yeah, it's definitely existed, but I don't know how much they did because I was, I was very young. I had no idea what was going on. I was just there to play laser tag. And I was like, what are these old farts doing? Um, they definitely, do, they were doing something. Yeah, that's that sounds older than what we've got. I know that we were already done. Like we were already registered when they started talking about making that requirement and stuff. Yeah. Like we were like, oh yeah, we did that like a year ago. Um, yeah, so for us, we've got just, just from having the rego, I think people um, forget about like, well, there's maybe some benefits people don't consider. So for us, for COVID, for example, because we run the league, um, we take payments and pay the site, right? And in New Zealand, if you were running a business, even a non-profit business, you could get a compensation for lost income, right? Um, so we got a couple grants from the government, for example, for our, for our org because of COVID. That's great. Um, wild. Anyone who's got sports leave as part of their job contract, um, even if you've got a pretty st- stringent requirement, like um, I think in New Zealand, most most contracts will say there has to be like a national body that selects teams and blah, 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 which we meet all those requirements for. So um, a couple of guys um, at Zaltec this year were completely paid leave, like not annual leave, but just sports leave, um, which they wouldn't have been able to get if we didn't have LSNZ. Mm. Um, so there's, there's tons of benefits to it. Also, just in general, like we haven't really accessed this, but getting like sponsorship or like even government mm. funding is super, is super possible. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, I think uh, every single salsa sort of meeting we have, we're like, we should really get incorporated so we can try and start organizing some sponsorship. For sure, yeah. Heaps and for heaps sure. of local businesses and stuff that do sponsor our local sports teams. Yeah. It's like, we can definitely make it happen, but... Mm, for sure, <laughs> yeah. Always, yeah. Yeah, there's the inertia of, like, I mean, we only just associated, like, in the last 12 months in Queensland. Um, you know, yeah. we had everything running, but it's kind of, it's it's like the inertia of having to get all the work done, right? Um, and then you've got to, and then you've got to keep the thing running, and you've got to lodge an annual return every year, and you've got to do all the things. So, yeah, there is a, there is some admin that's quite annoying. Unlike when you have your yearly meeting, like we have to have fifteen people, or it doesn't count. And like, really? Um, which we've always managed to do, but you know, it's it can be annoying, right? Like there's some um, some annoyances around. You know, sometimes if you want to change a rule, depending on what it is, you might have to have a vote, and blah blah blah, but. Like yeah. overall, it's it's worth it, right? And and I do think, you guys, oh sorry, you finished, mate. Oh, I was just gonna say for the longevity as well. Like, yeah, you know, if I stop organizing comps, we're still gonna <laughs> exist. We're still gonna have invites every year and stuff. It's not. Mm. It's no longer just down to one or two people. Yeah, I was gonna ask. So, does your association run leagues at both the locations? So we've always had a deal with Wayne, the Silverdale guy, since forever. Um, this is how we got started, is we ran a league, we would take the money and we'd pay them. So we get like a couple of dollars profit per player. Um, Dunedin, we never have that arrangement. But I believe the league night is fully run by the members. Like when I was there, I was running it. Um, and we've got staff members now who play, or players who've become staff members. And I think they're actually paid to play in their league now. Like, you know, they're on, they're on the clock while the league's on. Uh, the dream! Running, right? The dream! Which is, yeah, I mean, I mean that that makes a lot of sense, right? So, this, yeah, so I don't, we, we don't have any official involvement with the other leagues, but I believe it is run by, like, members. Yeah. Yeah, right. Very cool. And, uh, right, so we're actually going to get a little bit more into, um, some things on your agenda uh, for the Laser Sports New Zealand uh, Association. But before we do that, I just wanted to ask about a little bit about Zeltac. Um, and yeah, if um, you're not on the Zeltac committee, but however, you, you're pretty up to date on where things are at, can you provide um, a little bit mean, of- Do you mean Worlds? Oh, sorry, Worlds. Just... Sorry, Worlds. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore nice. every every part of every time I said Zeltac for the last thirty yeah, seconds. Yeah. Just insert worlds. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, you're not on the worlds committee, uh, but you're you're right on top of um, where everything's at with it. Um, is there any updates you can provide there? And I'm really curious to know about how, uh, what the limitations are for each country on how many teams they can send, and how you guys are approaching that in terms of um, sure. selecting New Zealand teams. So first of all. Um worlds basically all the information is out now so the dates for registering are out the dates for paying are out the dates of the event are out it's all like you can find it all online um if you go on our page we've got links to all that stuff on the lsnz worlds page um i'll explain how the team numbers work it's a bit complicated um it's it's not that complicated in practice but I find that people get confused when I explain it. So there's a list of the countries that, and, and it's just, it's an ordered list based on your performance at the last Worlds. So I think it's uh, Finland because they won, New Zealand because they came second, then Sweden because they were the next highest team. And then I think Australia or maybe US, I think Australia, then US, and then France is at the bottom. And then anyone else who hasn't attended, so like Germany and stuff, mm. there'll be, uh, I don't know if they're getting ordered, or they're, but they're at the bottom of that list, right? And the way the team assignments work is it just rotates around those countries until it's full. So it'll go, um, so it'll go. Finland gets a spot, then New Zealand gets a spot, then Sweden gets a spot, then Australia, and so on, right? Um, and at some point, you can imagine these countries are going to stop sending teams, right? So if it keeps rotating around like that, you get three. After three, you wouldn't get any more. Um, you wouldn't get any more than three unless we haven't met the team cap yet, right? Mm. Um, so you're pretty much guaranteed three. There's a scenario where you don't get three. 
and that's if it hits the the ultimate team cap, right? So the ma absolute max size is 21. So you have imagine we had 21 countries, you'd only get one each, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You're likely to get three because we're going to have about seven countries, and of those countries, not all of them are going to send three. So we're unlikely to hit that 21 number. So I would be assuming everyone gets three. I wouldn't even be worrying about that 21 thing. I'd be assuming everyone gets three. Um, so then what happens, imagine we're rotating around and um, all the countries are done, except for New Zealand and Australia, because that's realistically, that's probably going to happen, right? And say we're at like 12 teams at that point, it's going to keep going until we get to 15. Right. So the most likely scenario is a 15 team tournament where New Zealand and Australia are propping up the numbers, if that makes sense. And we'd like have an even split of the excess. So I would be, if I was, if I was applying for worlds as a New Zealand or Australia, I'd be pretty, I'd, I'd know for a fact, we're going to get three teams, right? It's guaranteed, basically guaranteed. Um, and I would be expecting we're probably going to get four, maybe five teams. Mm, yeah. um, that's, that, that's, that's how it works. Um, that would be the same for Australia. You probably expect Australia would be in the same boat as New Zealand in terms of those numbers. The only difference between NZ and Australia is we're higher ranked than you. So we'd get our fourth spot and then you'd get your fourth spot and so on. Um, the other difference is we might actually exhaust, like we might run out of teams, whereas you guys have an infinite number of teams, right? Mm, pretty much. Um, it depends who applies, obviously. But like, if, if, for example, if all our Nats teams applied and all your Nats teams applied, our three Nats teams would all get to go. Whereas for you guys, you'd have some decisions to make, right? Yeah. How are you guys going to make your decisions? So we've actually just announced it yesterday, I believe I posted it. Um, so you need to produce a ranked list of all your teams because you don't actually know how many you're going to get, right? So what you provide to the world's committee is a ordered list. So ours is mostly committee decisions so the lsnz committee will decide what we've said is it's going to be we already grade all of our players so it's going to be mostly based on just the raw gradings so if your team is numerically higher but if you're like you know they're not perfect and for example if you had all the worst c players on your team and another team had all the best of their grade and like you know what i mean maybe it flips or say you've got like an a player who hasn't played for two years you know, like maybe we take things like that into account, but mm. it'll essentially be just ranked purely on your grades with a little bit of discussion um, from our committee if needed. In and practice, those, the grades probably... for each of the individuals is something that the committee votes on, right? Yeah, so those grades are done every year. Mm. Um, you can also request a regrade whenever you want. And I've said, if you're applying for Worlds and you think your grade's too low, request a regrade. Um, but yeah, like if we're looking at the applications and there's a player who's obviously undergraded, you know, we can take that into account, right? Mm. Um, but yeah, the grades are done just by committee. Um, we use we use stats to we use stats to tell us which players we need to look at, and then it's it's a vote. Mm. Um, in practice, our grades are pretty accurate. Like when we look at our stats, at the grades that we've put on are very mm. good predictors of how people are going to come out. Mm. All right, opinion time, Holmes. How, yeah, what's what, up? What, what do you think uh, is the right approach for us Aussies to be selecting our teams? Oh, it's so hard. I think, um, I mean, organization-wise, this, this would definitely be the hardest, but having a selections tournament because we've got so many teams we could send would be also just kind of cool. Um, it gives us whatever teams are planning on going an opportunity to basically do a, a pre-worlds in Australia on the settings that will, obviously in Australia, we don't normally play one shop second stands. Um, that would make the most sense in terms of like, it's pretty clear cut. The best three teams at this tournament get to go. Obviously there's an issue of like, where would you host that tournament? Maybe you host a tournament, multiple, who knows? Um, but I think realistically that probably is a lot to organize and I don't think it would happen. Um, I mean, what they did for 2020 was just like a selections panel, right? Like they had a player from 
each state or something that was involved in the i think it was something like that um i guess that kind of makes sense you know get people from each state to try and mitigate biases and stuff um if you have you know and then also with the selections panel they can they'd be considering the best thing we have to look at as zoltac results right so if you have the catalyst guys or the vikings are like oh we want to go to worlds they're probably gonna looks pretty yeah let's say yeah. those guys they're pretty damn good um but then also you know we'll have things where like we won't have you know maybe you have a team of five or six really 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 good players that are all from different states but it's like they would probably still crush it mm -hmm. you know i think the probably the selections panel would be like the easiest um but i don't know i can't really think of any other way to to do it for yeah, us you guys definitely have the biggest challenge to for selection out of out of all the countries mm. um the state the state thing is quite complicated because theoretically you should have a country org, org but you guys don't right the closest thing is the zeltec committee um or your two worlds reps right you could also say it's up to them mm. Mm. um and then you've got like there's definitely the debate of if we have a team that's half hobart and half queensland they can't train together technically yeah. like you know is it is it better than the sum of its parts right like your uh your teams that train together are going to do better right um whereas most countries don't have that issue to the same extent that you guys do right mm. like even for us um you know there's no real argument for putting a dunedin player on cobras maybe the b team like maybe theoretic our theoretical second strongest team would be a hybrid but it would be close enough that it's pretty obvious that the training to give advantage probably eclipses the the um mm. you know mix and match advantage but for you guys it's it's very complicated right the other thing is like you have players who've played more worlds and you've got players who've played less worlds and how do you rank that like if you're going off zaltec results and you've got a team saying well hold on we're gods at world settings right and they've got some like proof rather than just saying that um <laughs> well you know like for example say the canberra guys were like well we went to the last world you guys haven't even been we yeah. should get to go right and you're like well look at your Zaltec results so you've you've yeah it's it's definitely challenging for you guys also just the cuts much harder right like if we're if we end up cutting a team it's going to be a team of like you know like dne players right or C and yeah. C, maybe some c players whereas you guys you guys could be cutting anyone right like you could you know what i mean like teams yeah. in the top 10 at zeltec right yeah it's pretty it's gonna be it'll be it'll be cutthroat mm. no matter i mean no you might just find it yeah it'll be interesting to see how it goes anyway and the time is a bit rough as yeah. well like you have to do it this year so yeah who are yeah. our world's reps i don't even know Simi and, brad. Simi and brad i think mm. i feel like i haven't had i haven't heard anything about worlds from like an aussie perspective like the aussie stuff yeah look jono has been very vocal that um from australian point of view if you're having troubles or if you have any concerns or whatever just come straight to him so jono is right. president of the world's committee yeah um so like if you're a top team and like if you're wolfpack let's say or whatever they're calling themselves now um that's, that's catalyst sorry yeah, yeah. how many if years have been catalyst for we're still calling them wolf back uh, no, be a, i know because i wasn't there for that though i wasn't there <laughs> for that true. if you're if you're you catalyst back. right and then and then the committee comes down and like they say oh it's going to be committee vote and then they don't pick you yeah like i'd probably go to john and be like hey man like <laughs> what's going on yeah. um the world's committee has said it has to be a performance-based selection they haven't said you know blah 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 but you can't be doing like oh we sent these guys because they're really good role models in our community or whatever mm -hmm. like you have to just choose... stand up cool guys yeah yeah no no you have to choose... <laughs> you, that, that, that you have to choose it in performance criteria right yeah it's up say. to you what that means but yeah. you're not sending like oh this guy riffed a thousand games so we're gonna send <laughs> or something. so it, could, it can be a selection panel but it's still got to be that's fine yeah. selecting based but on they have to be selecting on performance yeah yeah, on, yeah on the... i honestly don't see another way for us to do it no. like feasibly especially no. with we don't realistically if you guys that did it like a long that, term but... you could be like okay we've got three slots we're going to give one to the top person at zeltec we're going to have a tournament whoever can make it can play that one and then for the third one 
is going to be chameleon. Like something like that would probably be perfect for you guys. Um, have multiple paths. Um, but you know, it's like it's it's October now, right? You've got to be done by December. So mm-hmm. the main I thing see. I'd be stressing for the Australian community is like figure out who you're playing with and submit it to whoever you need to submit it to. Because mm. you might find it's really obvious, right? You like you do all this talking, and then you only get three teams apply. Yeah. Or you do all this talking and you get five teams apply, but you know three of them came one, two, three at Nats, and number four and five came like fifteenth and sixteenth or something, right? And like you don't really, you know what I mean? You don't really need to have a vote at that point. Yeah. So you should work out who actually wants to go before you stress over it too much. Yeah, I think realistically, like looking at the numbers and stuff like that, it's probably it's not there's not not going to be too many teams that are going to be cut essentially like i can't i can't see that there would be i don't know if there'd be more than five teams from australia that could realistically go i think for 2020 we had four or five we were going to send yeah but we only ended there up there was sending, a lot of hype for 2020 we only ended up sending it oh you in malaysia no right? they were cancelled the yeah cancelled one yeah, I'm a big fan of the selection panel, especially um, like we introduced it locally here in, in Queensland. And I think when you get to the point where you've got enough play, senior players in your community that can make uh, like uh, objective decisions, um, you know, that and they can remove their own personal biases and stuff. And you know, you've got trusted people that can do that, which we do in Australia. I think it becomes like um, such a good choice because any kind of a selection tournament is always going to be there's always going to be a player who can't make it or um a players who can't make it and it's going to and, and it's an extra expense as well um it's going to be too difficult to to coordinate all that so it has to be some kind of people selecting it uh and a selection panel can take into account all the factors because like once you start mixing teams and some players have played on h2 and some players haven't and the tassie guys play on uh world settings all the time but the queensland players don't i think a, sele- a selection panel can like you know uh, juggle all those different factors um to make a final it, yeah, decision it's a, it's a very hard thing to do um but it's also a good catch all like you know a selection panel you don't need to you, you know you could do it in a day right like yeah. <laughs> when your time when your time pressured like it's it's the way to go and like we have the same thing in new zealand like if we're gonna have a tournament do we have it in dunedin or do we have it in auckland and like yeah. xyz um yeah. but yeah I, th- I think um i would rather play for it personally if you can come up with a solution that works but and i and like ask saying someone look you have to come to this local come to go to worlds to me that's not that bigger yeah that's not that big an ask right you're talking <clears> about the world championships especially if it's like scheduled enough in advance yeah. right if you're like the by the way we're doing our selection comp in one week, and like two weeks from now, yeah. And it's like, what? I I have things on, but if it's announced far enough in advance, mm. I think. But I would I would do multiple yeah. events. Like, imagine you guys yeah. did four over the year in different places, and winning any one of them got you a spot, right? Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. I just I just don't know if that's like in Australia. It's a big place, and you've got the okay, which yeah, are, yeah. which arena are we playing in situation? So you've got to play in multiple arenas. Oh yeah, and then yeah. That's, it's, it's, it's there's definitely challenges with it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, lots lots for Simi and Brad to think through. Uh, good luck with that one, guys. Um, what yeah. we need is one arena that no one ever plays in, and we just do our world's qualifier tournaments in. That would have I think nice. um, did New South Wales do their selection in Canberra one year? Um, I think for the New South Wales for like for Zoltak, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think they do. They did one qualifier in Albury, one in Canberra, and they might have done one at Code Red. I'm not sure. Yeah. But they just they basically tried to do one at each of those. Because that's a so. cool solution, right? Uh, for mm. example, you guys could come to New Zealand and play one. <laughs> and then yeah, the cheapest true. place you know for us I mean? to go. Yeah, it's the maze that uh, it's the right maze, and then you'll know who's going to be better on those maze on those packs. Yeah, that's true. I didn't actually ask before when we were talking about Silverdale, so I'm going to insert a question. It's like regressing back to a previous conversation. What what packs are currently at Silverdale, and what are they going to have at Worlds? Silverdale is currently pro. Okay, but they're going to have H two. It will be H two. Yeah, it will be H two. There we go. Cool. And I'm praying we get them early enough to actually train with them. 
That would be nice. Oh, yeah. it'll, be co- it'll be a Cobra's first to train on the correct packs. Yeah, right. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I think Aubrey's Aubrey's been waiting for their H two packs for a, a little bit now as well, mm. from what I understand. Because I mean, pre nuts one was supposed to be on H two, but it's now I think it's. Uh, if I knew it was going to be on Nexus, Nexus. I would have gone, man. Like Nexus. I so know, I, so good. I can't wait. So is as it, is someone it... that's been on Nexus for the last like six years, I can't wait. It's the hold yeah, up so... with the manufacturing, or is it the hold up like a budget I think I'm pretty sure it's the manufacturing. It's like the it's the it's, and it's not even the the plastics. It's like the electronics. I think. Yeah. Okay. That's my understanding. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, that was. Um, is there anything else uh, to share about Worlds, Danny? Before we move on to your exciting new news. That you want to share That's with? pretty much it, I think. Once again, there are like it has been posted. Like, there's a Worlds Facebook group. Yeah. Um, mm. All the details are out about eligibility and selection yeah. dates and. Yeah. Yada yada. Yeah, Australia, cool. we need to pull our fingers all the yeah. way out of our ass and <laughs> figure out what we're bloody doing. Yeah, like we're <laughs> we're, we're counting on, on you guys to bring some teams, man. Like we need uh, big shame from Australia. We've, you guys are currently, never... like I said, fourth or fifth on the on the rankings. So yeah, like probably want to ne- sort that out as well. We've never put our best foot forward ever at a Worlds before. Like we've always, nah. like we, when Wank were in their heyday, they never went um, to any of the Worlds. And then uh, I think in that included 2014. They were still kind of around back then. Yep. And then 2017, there was we were supposed to go. I think Maroons were supposed to go. That was kind of when we were at our peak. And then, um, you know, I did Urban Extreme and had to pull out and the whole team pulled out, which was a big bummer. Um, and then I think Malaysia, the cattle, Wolfpack guys were, Wolfpack pro- was supposed to were supposed to go, to yeah, go but then to go, yeah. they got cancelled. So, yeah. They yeah, were going to do the good. Cyan jerseys. They were going to do Malaysia the Malaysia was going to be sick, honestly. Yeah. Like, it was in, like, a mall with, like, an amusement park and stuff. Like, yeah. So yeah. cool. So, yeah, we've got to get our best team together. Let's let's do it. Um, all right. So, time to move on to some new news that you got for us, Danny. Tell us what's happening next year that's exciting. Yeah, so obviously we've got Worlds, um, and every year we have invites. So the invites has not been fully confirmed yet, but it's going to be in... Okay, I don't want to say the month because I might be wrong. Um, it's going to be back to normal year, time, like August, around then. Oh, yeah. um, we had to move it because of Nats being moved, so I think we're going to get it back to about its normal time, and it's going to be in the South Island um, we're still discussing Dunedin versus Invercargill. Mm-hmm. Um, so Invercargill is a new site. We've had one event there. It was awesome. The site ops really good, etc. Um, so the committee, the com- in our in, in our lessons, the committee decides the, the location. Um, and basically, it's it'll be down to one of those two sites. Um, and we'll, we'll get we'll get that announced this year. Um, so every invite pretty much has been the best one ever. So far, there's probably a few that stand out as highlights, but for the most part, each invite is better than the last one. It was awesome this year. We had two full Hobart teams. Mm, um, that was really cool. A ton of Dunedin players. Like it was, and the Silver Dow Arena, it's just such a good time. Um, so yeah, so in, invites will be happening. And then we have, uh, as you alluded to, we've got a new event. Um, so we're having, for the first time ever, a New Zealand Open event. Um, so we've kind of always wanted to have an open. So when I say open, I mean, there's no, no limitations on team formation, um, invites, we have a, a, a cap on the strength of the teams. So, uh, yeah, it's on our website already. The New Zealand there Open. Is. So this is just a couple of months before Worlds and it's in the Worlds arena. It will be basically the same as our, um, as our invites event. So we will be playing all the New Zealand events um so some of those will be a little different to what's at worlds um the mm. team events are the same um but it'll be all of our all of our usual side events so it'll be solos with one shot per second and no reloads it will be doubles with zeltac settings it will be triples elimination and it will be um well it's new zealand teams but it's basically world's teams um we have a slightly different rule book but the settings are all the same yeah um and we may or may not include a uh, tag team as well. What's tag team? Is, is that the 2v2? That's our the... 2v2 format, yeah. yeah. Um, so we ran that for the first time. Well, actually, we've run it a couple times now. But it's um, if you scroll down to the maze map again, 
Um, basically, in those little crosses, on the, there's one on the left and one on the right, um, we play two versus two in each of those crosses. So it's similar to Lord of the Rings. Uh, it's a very cool game format. Um, four second spawns, uh, one shot per second, stuns, two second stuns, but you only have to do one stun and then a kill. Uh, and you only have 20 lives. So um, imagine if you had 20 lives in lore, it'd be better because once you start getting spanked, you just get eliminated and the game ends rather than getting spanked for six minutes straight. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. um, that's why it's got lives and it works out really well. The games take about 90 seconds each. Yeah. You've only got four seconds spawn, so it's full running. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. That's so good. It's, we have a similar it's... game we train on and like, you, man, you sweat. Like, yeah, it yeah. Is... It's, a, it's an awesome, it's an awesome format. Um, we're undecided whether it'll be a permanent fixture and, invites it's so far it's been a bit of a silverdale special um we'll see but um <clears throat> for people wanting to maybe give it a go in their own arena would you say obviously not everyone's going to have a cross but would you just say it just has to be some kind of a structure that you can go around the whole thing you honestly quickly? don't even need to be able to go around it like if you took a base the inside of most bases would be fine um mm. one thing you might want to say is no touching the walls right. we considered saying that because like people pushing themselves into, into a pocket or whatever isn't really in the spirit of it um in in practice what happens if someone does that is you just 2v1 their other guy and then because it's right. lives right so you just kill their other guy while while he hides but um the inside of any base is fine um but yeah just mark off areas i think the hobart guys were playing it but they were playing it in like a third of the maze right. <laughs> like because they didn't know um that's a that's a lot of running <laughs> I could be, I could be, I could be misremembering that. Maybe it was the Dunedin guys who were doing that. I don't know. Anyway, it's it's pretty flexible. Like we've played it. Um, like if you look right in the middle of our map, where there's those all those parallel lines, yeah. um, like just below Green Base, we've played it there as well. Hmm. Um, which was also fine. Like you can you can kind of play anywhere. The crosses are like kind of perfection, but and the you idea is that you, you set up in an area where the the amount of times where you've got two players alive staring at each other across a, a section is, is just like kept to a minimal really, isn't it? Like, yeah. So the other thing we do to prevent that, like that, you're right. Like we, we've kind of failed if the game ever ends on time, like it's set to five yeah. minutes and in theory it should be over in about 90 seconds. So if it ever goes to five minutes, you've stuffed up, right? Um, what we do is the other thing is if you do tie, like if, if you, if you survive and someone on the other team survives, that counts as you both losing in terms of VP and stuff. Um, right. So there's no there's no incentive ever to wait it out. You just mm -hmm. lose if you wait it out. Yeah, yeah. I think it's um I think <clears throat> finding, especially in the wake of, I was going to ask as well. I'll finish this train of thought. In the wake of obviously a lot of um, scenes got kind of destroyed by covid and some of them are still very much struggling like victoria for instance is like mm. not doing particularly well i think that's where formats like this that can still be like oh, yeah. super competitive and you can even though the settings are different um you're still very much just like working on and sharpening your fundamental mm. skills so yeah. triple um, zulim is really good as well um yeah because again we only put four teams of three in yeah. But like this is the big secret about tournaments is you need like people almost have more fun the more time they're sitting out. Because when you're not playing you're like so you need enough games, right? But when you're not playing, you're socializing and like so with this when there's only four people in the arena, yeah. even if you've only got like twelve, fourteen, sixteen people at your tournament, you still get a lot of downtime. And you can even only you know, we put two two lots of two in, right? Yeah. But you could even just put one lot of two in, right? And you'd even need to you could play a tournament with only 10 people and you could still have a little pyramid or whatever. Yeah. Um, so for, for sure, yeah, it's it's really great. Like we've, we run, we haven't run a Teams comp outside of invites for like definitely since COVID, but even pre-COVID it was rare. Like we, all of our comps are triples, doubles, whatever. Um, we've had a lot of success mixing formats so the triples tournament in um, Dunedin in about two three weeks um, we'll be playing like you know like Zaltec doubles style so three bases on get your bases just regular what you guys would call regular triples 
and that'll have six teams in the arena. And we'll be playing like New Zealand Triple Z Limp, which is four teams in the arena. And then we'll be playing um, Tag Team, which is, well, you can have, like, it's 2v2, so it's two teams in the arena, but you might have two going on at once, right? We did this yeah. last year. It was awesome. It actually felt like, like you know that campaign feel you get at Nats? It was a two-day mm-hmm. tournament, but still had that campaign. So we do, like, a round robin, or, you know, not a round robin, but, like, a round one, whatever you want to call it. You get different VP for each event. And then our final system was actually, like, the top six teams played the six-man triples, and then the top and then we kick two out right and the top four play the four man triples and mm-hmm. then the top two and that played the two man triples right for right. for first and second yeah yeah so even finals was all three four it was awesome like it was such a cool event um and we're doing the exact same and the same with doubles right we can do one base doubles we can do um we can do like uh full doubles we can do um tag team now you could do double zealum if you wanted mm-hmm. um yeah, yeah that, I think that... um, our uh, league scene in Adelaide has actually been like pretty dead for the last few seasons. Like, um, we've gotten struggled to get enough to do team games uh, most weeks, and um, something I've started doing towards the end of last season, and I'm going to be doing this season as well, is just doing like one night tournaments. So rather than you know league being like this this you know 10 week commitment thing which when you've got people that are like inconsistently rocking up like you make teams but then like teams are always having subs so like the teams feel yeah. different every week um making every night feel a little bit more like its own event and oh, um yeah. again with like low numbers like doing things like we we, we did swede format last week but um yeah doing t- t- formats like that is a i think it's yeah they're super fun and at the end of the day obviously people miss the uh strategic part from like the our normal five 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 player team team games um but like the fundamental skills are just yeah they're still very much there Mm, if not even more important because you there isn't as nearly as much you know strategy you can lean on just choose the game of strategy yeah (laughs) yeah no you kind of have to you know work on your skills so no i i love all of these these smaller formats and I think, yeah, any state that feels like they're struggling should definitely be doing doing these kinds of forms. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm. And there is a way to actually still still have a season, so to speak. So this is how we run all our junior and homeschool leagues and stuff like that. So <clears throat> the teams change each week and the game format changes each week, but every player is allocated points based upon yeah. how their team went. And then the more they more frequently they rock up during the season and if on average yeah. their team is doing well, the higher they get on the ladder. So you can still turn it into a seasony thing. Do you use that yeah. same rank for balancing or do you balance with a different rank? Uh, we do, for those um, competitions, because they're just kind of, um, you know, they're lower level. We don't have gradings or anything or handicaps yeah. or anything like that. We just basically yeah, yeah. form roughly fair teams and they change yeah, each week. Yeah, just hand, just hand, for, hand pick them. Yeah. Yeah, so another thing we've got that I haven't mentioned is, um, this is another one that Rachel's done, because um, we've got the gradings, she actually has an app that makes teams. Um, so as people arrive, we also use it for payments and stuff, right? But as people arrive on the night, we just say who's who's there, and you press the button that makes the teams. It's not perfect, cool. but people like get less angry when the machine stacks the teams than when a player does it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so it's pretty good for that. And then there's also like back in the day we actually tried doing exactly what you're saying. So you, the app, you know, you manually grade all the players and then you play. And if you win, it increases your grade a little bit. You know, you get a point. So you know, you go up. And if you lose, you go down. And then ideally, as people like sort of separate out, um, we found that it didn't work with the low numbers because it would just sort of always make the same team, right? Um, but if you have like it might be time to bring it back for us because we're hitting 25 players a week. Mm. We're hitting 25 players without everyone being there, you know? Mm. Um, right. So, mm. well, yeah, we're probably going to look at a, at a f- solution for more quickly making mm-hmm. five balanced teams and, and running the games because, it, it's you know, once you get to those numbers, it's quite challenging unless you're really good at doing it manually. So wh- whose app is this that creates the teams? Uh, Rachel's app. Rachel's app. Is she open to sharing? Is Rachel open yeah, to sharing? Probably, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I look, it's 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 like pretty straightforward. I think it just does like an S because every grade oh, has like yeah. a value, right? So like an A is like 600 points and a B is 400 points or mm. whatever, right? And it just does a. I know she doesn't use the same numbers that we use in words. And then I think it just does an S, mm. and then it goes. These are the most unbalanced teams, and then like swaps players and just tries to a bit like how Doug's grids work. Yeah. Um, it just does it just does swaps to try and improve it. Mm. And then those are your teams. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, for sure, talk to her if you. Mm. Um, okay. So that app we also use to register everyone as they arrive on site, and it tells us. So we sell a part, like a five-week pass, um, and it tells us whether they're on the pass or not as well, or whether they need to pay. Mm. Um, That's cool. And then like it does all that stuff, right? Because we mm. pay, because we like we have our own paywave machine, like mm. Alice and Z paywave thing. So we take the money directly off everyone, and then we pay the site. Um, based on how many people are there cool. so we need to do all that quickly right yeah that's awesome you guys all got that set up i, f I find i found the um the changeable team league great uh, so when i started at urban extreme I, I used it to get started i find it so helpful at the beginning when all the players yep. are new they're deciding whether they actually want to spend their discretionary time on this thing called laser tag so their attendance is inconsistent um, and you need people to socially integrate, so you need them to kind of be on different teams each yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. No, and then... it's, it's a really good idea. And the other thing I like about it is you get points for attendance, right? Yeah. Like, so you can if you come every week, you're gonna be like, oh, I'm better than <laughs> yeah. I'm better than Butzer. Like he's yeah. only got, you know, like, yeah. even if he wins every time he plays, if he doesn't play every week, it's true how you know, washed he is. <laughs> Check it out. Mm. Wow, you know, like it's it, the thing is, it gives you like. If you have like five different ways to measure yourself, you'll focus yeah. on the one that you're doing the best on, right? Yeah. So like, you know, when you have like a handicap league and you let people see the real scores, yeah. if they won on the real scores, they'll be like, oh, well, we won the real scores because we about the handicap, right? And yeah. if they run on the handicap, you'll be like, oh, well, I won on the handicap. <laughs> and if you won individually, you can be like, well, I won, right? Yeah. And like, you'll hear people be like, oh, well, I got the highest accuracy or like whatever you can <laughs> take away to prove that you're like, so if you've got like this attendance thing, it's just like another, yeah. another like thing that you could be competing on yeah i might actually in integrate that what you were saying into to the adelaide league now because i'm pretty much running it yeah you can, you can literally moment. just go home and be like here's everyone's points for the night you got 10 points you got eight points you got six yeah. points yeah yeah cool um all right i reckon it's time to talk about uh a certain player tracking system what do you reckon i reckon i reckon yeah sure sure yeah where, where's where's it at, mate? Where everybody is just so pumped about this thing. So, I'm not sure if you if, have you guys seen what we had at invites. Have you actually yeah, checked out the video? I watched the finals. Yeah. 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 So, it's basically in a similar state. Like from a, from like what you see, it still looks like that. Um, right, let's pull it up. We've here. we've obviously had a bit of a break since like Nats and stuff. Um, we're sort of ramping back into it now. Um, but this is the basic system. So there's a couple of things, like there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff we're working on. We're trying to get, you know, the dots moving around a bit smoother. You can yeah. see that, um, well, in a, there's a couple dots stuck at the bottom left at the moment, yeah. but pretty soon it's, it should just be one. It was really pissed me off. There was one that was stuck at the bottom left for the whole of finals. And I kept going in to try and find it and fix it, but I couldn't. Um, so it's it's a shame that that was happening for finals because we have many games where there was no stuck packs, right? But obviously, um, you know, we're going to sort that out. Um, the big project for us at the moment is like cleaning everything up. So to run this, I have to be running like, I have to bring my laptop, put it on the network, run the code on the laptop. Like it doesn't work when we're not there. Even though we do have a Raspberry Pi in the arena that's running like half the code. So like, our next steps is having everything running on the arena and having a permanent scoreboard at the site. So the site ops already asked us to make it just a permanent thing. Um, so that's kind of, and that's kind of what we need to do anyway, is like, you know, package it together as a complete system, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we will have this for Worlds. We will have this for the New Zealand Open, which will be in Silverdale. We don't have any plans to put it in another site just yet. But we are sort of thinking about plans to make it easier to put in another site because 
Yeah, it's it's not the easiest thing in the world. No. Um, yeah, so basically, like the a lot of what we're doing now is back end, and then it it'll be another pass over the the front end, right? So the main things we want to do is obviously on the right hand side. Um, there's a lot of information there. Like we think this is pretty much enough to watch a game without having to jump back to the five by three. Mm-hmm. But we want to make it so that no one's ever going, oh, I wish I could see X, Y, Z. I think we've overdone it with the base info. Like you can sort of see the same info in three different ways. Um, like if you look yeah, at like the, the, what are the boxes, man? Yeah. So let's, so if you just look at green team, mm. um, so they've got 10 green boxes, right? Which means their base hasn't been hit at all. Oh. If a red player was to destroy it, one of those green boxes would. Uh, well, if you look at if you look at Hobart swipers, you see blue. How you can yes. see a red player has taken one of their bases. Right. So that'll show you the order that the bases have gone down by That's and what cool. color and stuff. And then the bottom line is your takes, right? So if you look at red team, they've lost one base to green and they've got one blue base, right? Yeah. And then if you look at the actual players, you can see who those players are that's got the base. So you can see that on, on red team, it's Chewy that's yeah. got um, red, blue base. But you can also see when you look at the player dots themselves, you can see which bases they've got. You see those little orbs at the bottom of the dots. Oh, I thought they were feet. I thought they nah, were feet nah, this whole actually, time. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> the bases. And the reason we put those there is like, the idea is like you look at blue base and you can see, okay, there's two team people attacking blue base and they both need it. Or there's two mm. people attacking blue base, but one of them's got it. Or yeah. just two people at blue base, but they're obviously just trolling because they've both got, you know, like you can tell that at a glance rather than having to look at the, look at the yeah. map and then look at the scoreboard and like, mm. but I think that we've kind of, you know, there's like, we've got the same information three times and there's limited space. So, mm. um, we're still working on that. We need, um, all the bugs that the five by three has, you know, like with, sometimes it doesn't show the right base or sometimes it'll yeah. show an extra hurdle. We've got all those bugs. But um, Hobart Guys Twinkles has fixed all that in his version. He's written an alarming amount of code that, that figures all those mistakes out and fixes them. That's cool. So we either need to steal his code or we need to do it do it ourselves, right? Because we'd like it to be you know, truly accurate. Yeah. Um, sure. But yeah, number one is like cleaning up behind the scenes and then number two is going to be um, cleaning up the scoreboard. Um, we think the scoreboard's pretty good, but like obviously we want to get it better. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're always looking for feedback on what we can improve on the score side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one is like, you know, the maze map. Like we're, this is why we made it grey instead of white. It just like it looks a bit awkward, like the way it's presented. We're not really sure how to make it. No matter what we do, it just looks like a piece of paper. With, lines on it you know like i want to make it we want to make it look cooler somehow but i'm not really sure what the i feel what like the go with that is i feel like it having a dark background and making the walls lighter looks really nice i'm actually just i just yesterday actually i i filmed a, a video at home uh at a, like a position breakdown for the field pointing position rather than demonstrating it in an arena i've got my maze map that i've yeah, done yeah. up and um yeah for that i have the background like not black but like that you know that charcoal black that everyone yeah, yeah, yeah. loves i have, have it like that kind like of a black and, stuff, yeah. and then white lines and stuff and i think i think that looks that looks nice because i get what you mean like when you have a gray background it kind of looks it looks like a prototype when it has a gray background yeah yeah um, so we're trying to like it looked even worse with a white background <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, no, so yeah maybe, maybe also, you're right maybe going inverted yeah and i think also nowadays like everyone uses everything on dark mode dark right mode, yeah. if they, you know they they go to pull up oh i'm gonna go watch the world stream and they pull it up on their phone mm. at whatever time and it's, yeah. <laughs> you know white mostly white background they get flashbang mm. or is it, if you have the dark background it's like it's much yeah, nicer yeah. on the eyes yeah so um and then i think maybe like with our ui i think we're gonna get it to a certain point like where it's basically fine for a tournament like you watch a whole tournament on there no problems yeah but like um the hobart guys and maybe some others as well like there's some stuff going on in europe as well are kind of ahead of us on the scoreboard style Mm. so probably we'll eventually make the data stream available and people can make their own ui Uh, but that's Mm. kind of a far Mm. a far future goal Mm. at the moment 
do you guys have when a player gets tagged do you have a database entry for the position in the arena that the tag happened yes yeah, so it's a bit of a technical question we don't have first of all it's not recorded unless we turn recording on we do have a recording function um, and that records every single event and type with timestamps right mm. um the game event the the actual stuff that's coming in the game like the tags and stuff is just pnc and the it's just like what your normal scoreboard reads same as the five by three and everything and the data the positioning data is ours right so when like when a player tags another player when we get the event from pnc we draw the line between the two mm. dots right and we could log where we could log when we drew that line right um yeah. and where where it was from and to so you could say yeah okay um because in the future like stats is probably the big one that we're going to work on next mm. we'd love to be able to display like tag ratio on defense tag ratio on attack um yeah, even that... like tag ratio in the base right like yeah like once you cross that baseline how many people did you tag or whatever yeah. like um that, that sort of stuff is the next sort of thing we want to do and we definitely yeah um at the moment it's it's not really a stats machine it, it's just live yeah yeah that was essentially the reason i asked the question because mm. for me I, the, I that's the thing i'm looking forward to most is um yeah. being able to accurately rank all the last line defenders or um all the all you know the defend you know we can actually get accurate rankings of how players are performing mm. in different so regions this of map arena. behind it actually does have three areas or maybe four areas maybe there's a float as well um and we did originally have like a little sword and a little shield icon um and it would switch to a sword when you went into like enemy territory um but uh it didn't always work <laughs> we hadn't we hadn't finished it um by and by so we took it out but that's cool. that's like that's we're really big on that like actually being able to use because this is basically for spectating right mm. um and it's cool to watch back your games as well mm. but it doesn't give you like at the moment it's, it doesn't give you any data mm. but we're aware that there's a ton of data that would be awesome to have mm. i think distance traveled too so being able to compare people in particular mm. roles like your gcs for example and looking at the distance they're traveling um and in and, the, and a heat map of obviously where they're spending most of their time oh, yeah. and things like that yeah for but sure it's, it's you know we've seen how much the stream has enhanced the level of play um in the australasian yeah. scene and once we get to that point it's going to take another you know big leap forward oh yeah mm. yeah it's another thing about silverdale that we're really lucky like if you look at the cameras on the left um each one of those is basically looking at the take spot um mm. but you can see they're really like they're good quality their color they look really nice yeah, that looks nice um, there's actually like 12 cameras in there and they're all that quality cool. um there's a there's a i think there's one at each door essentially plus the plus the pocket from each base so you could have a red a red view which would show you all four doors in the in the pocket um and then yeah we've got um we've got a bit of skills in nz like um the guy who puts the stream together is uh troggy not sh i don't think he's been to his LTAC um but he's been doing this stuff for us for years and he's he's awesome looks like a really yeah nice i feel like the 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 ability to which you can analyze your games with tools like this is just insane like i know <clears throat> there's quite a lot of fps esports at the moment that have the technology where um i'll just use overwatch as an example because that was the one i played but they added um replays in that and mm. so it wasn't like a recording of your game like it's a they just, just record your screen it's an actual like every single event is kind of like logged and then when you watch it back it's like those events are being replayed but then you can be in a spectator camera and you can view it from literally whatever perspective you want yeah it's um it's pretty damn cool and i feel like yeah i don't know i feel like a tool one day where it's like when we you watch the stream or whatever um and it's not on just on twitch and stuff it's on its own website and then you can have like this screen but you can also have oh, you, you, 12 cameras you're not going to display 12 cameras on the one screen yeah you're not, gonna to, you're not gonna be able to see it all at once but if there's some kind of a thing where you can like 
just change and look at whatever camera you want for That'd sure really awesome like well. you know with like the ip cameras you can almost already do that like yeah i don't know how that i, I don't think that's really appropriate for like everyone logging into the site's ip cameras but you know like there's it, you just have like a layer in between right you could you could yeah. do it for sure but yeah um i will say like when you come home and watch your games back with this it's so it's so good right it's so much better than being than trying to oh where was i at this point oh, i think i was still on defense yeah. oh have i gone out yet oh it looks like sean's come back so i must be out now like mm. just watching the game and like it's it's so good the elimination is, is awesome as well like when you know you got one guy hiding behind the other team and they're like it's you, you know that one guy one life hero and you can actually yeah, yeah. watch watch how he managed to do it mm. like it's it's yeah it's fantastic so we're talking to everybody in Europe and everybody in the USA right now. You got to get your dollars together, get your pennies, go save up because you need to get to Worlds next year because we need to see the oh, yeah. best teams on the planet um, all playing in the same arena with this technology. It's going to be like absolute world first. Um, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to buy an industrial sized box of popcorn for that. That's basically <laughs> my goal. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, it's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you, Danny. Um, is there any final things you'd like to share with us before we finish up for the day? Yeah, come to come to events in NZ. We're going to have, uh, we've got three big ones, right? We've got Worlds, we've got Invites, and we've got um, our new event, Open. So the Open really is targeted at bringing people over from Australia. Um, it's going to be awesome. Like, if you've talked to anyone about Invites, they'll tell you how cool it is. Mm. And this will be uh this will be invites with whatever team you want to play on my recommendation to you danny is to make sure you subscribe to virgin and jetstar and all the airlines that travel between the two countries and every time they put a sale on post that up on the uh, zeltac page yeah, we used to do we used to do that actually yeah it's a good yeah it's a good idea <laughs> awesome. well, yeah the flights from adelaide to new zealand are criminal uh, yeah well i mean invites is going to be in the south island this year um we have had Australians come to Dunedin a bunch of times, but never like, you know, we had 10, we had 10 Hobart players this year. Um, and, and we had, uh, like Guinea was there. Um, hopefully there's no one I'm forgetting from another state. Brad was uh, there as well, right? Who? BMW. Uh, yeah, he was. Yeah. He's been to a bunch, right? Which is, mm. it's, he's been to Dunedin at least once, I think. Um, we've had Dorky, we've had, um, we had Grace come. We've had a bunch of people have come to one. Right, Spider's been there. Yeah, Big Red um, comes has come to. A Red has come to a bunch. Well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, everyone who comes loves it, man. Like it's it's a it's an awesome event, right? It's it's short, sharp. You play like five different formats. It's it's good times. <sighs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to be saving up my dollars to get to one because I can't wait to get to an invite sometime mm. soon. Um, and yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing everything there is to know about things happening in New Zealand, Popeyes. And uh, yeah, we look forward to a big year ahead for you guys and good luck uh, with all the work you're doing on the tracking system, mate, as well. It's um, coming along awesome. God's work. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Until next time, everybody, uh, we hope you've enjoyed the, the pod and we'll see you again in a fortnight's time. Peace out. See you later. Peace out. Peace out. <laughs>